So what are we talking about today? Yeah. So the pelvic floor muscles support all those lovely internal organs that are resting towards your pelvis, right? But what happens when we remove some of those organs? And that's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about hysterectomy. We're going to talk about those of you um, that may know someone who had one, one of, maybe some of you have gone through one personally, whether it has been recent or years ago. Uh, we've got some information and some education for you, and please reach out to us if you are experiencing anything that we talk about, because uh, we can definitely be here as a resource to help you um, in your healing process, whether it's recent or a long time ago. Some of the things that I know women have come to us and um, said over and over, and those are the kind of things that we want to share with you too, just letting you know that this is experienced by a lot of women that they'll ask us, um, do other women feel like this? Do other women recover this slow or this quickly? Or, you know, everyone thinks that um, what they're experiencing is very unique, but honestly, we hear the same things over and over again. And when talking about this topic, that's the key points that we're going to cover are a lot of the factors that come along with it that you may not realize. Or after that point, after you've seen the surgeon, um, or seeing your doctor, um, maybe you're experiencing some things along the way when you start to get back into activity. And those are the, the kind of, of things that you won't always be told, go see someone like us, a pelvic floor PT, but we hear this all the time. And these strange, mysterious sort of symptoms that pop up can be helped with pel pelvic floor PT. So Dr. Lynn's is gonna talk about um, what it entails with a hysterectomy and also um, kind of guiding how we guide women before and afterward. Definitely. So when we talk about hysterectomy, the three most common ways that a hysterectomy is performed or the three procedures that happen in surgery are a total hysterectomy, a partial hysterectomy, and then a radical hysterectomy. So a lot of times I feel like when we're talking about a hysterectomy, you know, with our lady friends, we think all those reproductive organs are just removed. And it's not the case. Depending on uh, what you have specifically going on, you may only have your uterus removed, right? So that's a partial hysterectomy. Or you may have your uterus and your cervix removed. So now we're talking a total hysterectomy. Both of those should not be affecting your hormones. So if you're still premenopausal age, you should look forward to continuing to have those proper hormones in those menstrual cycles. But then if you are in need of a radical hysterectomy where we're removing the uh, surgeons removing your uterus, your cervix, and your ovaries and fallopian tubes potentially, then we talk more about the hormones that may or may not be uh, in abundance like they were before. So we have a lot of women that come in and they're feeling different things and based on what they specifically went through, we can help you heal um, those six weeks and, and then some after the fact. Yeah, and a lot of the common uh, issues have to do with those pelvic floor muscles. And so going into um, the different types of hysterectomies mm -hmm. too, and just knowing there can be a vaginal approach to having the surgery or there can be an uh, abdominal approach. So with the abdominal approach, that's where we'd help with scar tissue um, healing and working on mobilizing that scar tissue area um, or anything that requires you to start activating and using those muscles um, can be affected if there's any scar tissue involved. And that's the same case when we talk about post C-section, but any sort of surgery is gonna have trauma to the area and needs that guidance and sometimes a little bit of hands-on work to be able to get it to heal properly too. Exactly. So when we talk about common reasons that women may get a hysterectomy, um, there are quite a few, uh, three that I'll name here, that pelvic floor physical therapy can be very beneficial for before and after um, if hysterectomy is needed. Uh, one may be endometriosis. Uh, pelvic floor physical therapy is a great resource in calming the pelvic floor areas and abdominal areas. Um, and we often can help in terms of pain modulation in addition to using those pelvic floor muscles properly and allowing for them to relax when sometimes they can be tight based on the abdominal pain that you may be experiencing with the endometriosis. Um, also um, what we call uterine prolapse. So the uterus is dropping lower, similar to what we talked about last Thursday um, regarding prolapse. So the uterus is dropping lower than it should 
coming out of the vaginal uh, area there. And by coming to a pelvic floor physical therapist, we can help you to strengthen those muscles and then allow for support of that uterus so that you no longer have the dissension or the dropping down. And then also pelvic pain. Some women will go to their doctor and seek out a, a hysterectomy uh, based on the pelvic pain that they're having. And similar to endometriosis, uh, we can help to calm the structures and help to support um, the lengthening of them so they then know how to contract as opposed to being uh, spasmed or tight, which can cause a lot of discomfort. Yeah, one of the, the most beneficial things for pelvic pain and the relaxation portion are ways that we can teach you using yoga, using um, the strategies that we have with exercise. So it can be part of your daily routine. It's not just something you would see us for, but being able to have a program to follow because with anything in life, especially when you want to remain active, you have to have a routine and sometimes some lifestyle shifts. So what kinds of things can we teach you that you can integrate into your exercise program um, and not just walking or not just uh, weight training, but how you might need the right types of stretches and exercises and really teach you how to do those correctly and what can impact your pelvic floor muscles too. Exactly. And then if we shift gears a little bit, um, those women who have come to us and have had a hysterectomy often will complain of bladder issues. So to give you a little information kind of behind the scenes on why those bladder issues may come about and how pelvic physical therapy can assist, uh, during a hysterectomy there can be loosening often of the ligamentous structures that would be holding some of those organs in place. And then as a result of that, the strength just isn't there. And so now the bladder isn't really sure how it's supposed to be functioning and you may be noticing some leakage. Um, some leakage can also come as a result of the bladder itself dropping lower now that you no longer have either the uterus or the cervix in that same position. Now the bladder can drop down and now it can rest on the urethra or near the area that kind of helps to send urge signals to the brain. And now you're having urge symptoms, you're having um, the need to want to go to the bathroom when maybe you just went. So in terms of the pelvic floor physical therapy route, we can help to train your bladder and that connection between the bladder and the brain and the pelvic floor muscles. We help you to relax the pelvic floor muscles when needed so that then the bladder knows when to contract and you then can urinate. But then also knowing when we don't want to go to the bathroom and being able to control those pelvic floor muscles to tell the bladder, nope, not time to go. Yeah. So important. And there's a lot of, of things that women just don't realize that they can um, use for the future. So even though you had the surgery, it's not something you have to live with, these kind of symptoms. But bladder problems, painful sex, um, any kind of un pain, mysterious pain, abdominal area or vaginal area, um, I would say those are the common things that, that I've seen. Definitely. What about you? And then regarding the um, incision, a lot of women needing guidance on how to keep the superficial connective tissue uh, mobile after if you've had an abdominal incision um, in terms of the avenue that was taken to have the hysterectomy, uh, making sure that you can have proper motion of the abdominal area so that you then can participate in not only exercise, but life, sex, all the things that kind of improve the quality of life. Uh, another common thing that I've heard of with digestive issues too mm -hmm. and just experiencing more gas bloating and even though um, it's your pelvic organs there is some sort of relationship there and uh, teaching you the right types of exercise so getting out there and walking doing things that are going to help your blood flow circulation help your digestive system too mm -hmm. and the more that you're sitting and sedentary that can definitely make things worse um, yeah, when you have certain organs removed, you can think of your abdominal area as almost like a puzzle, right? You have certain organs that are there and they are fitting perfectly. And then we have surgeons coming up and in and removing certain components because of whatever you're going through personally. And so now those puzzle pieces have to figure out where they're going to fit again. I even had one client that indicated that um, she uh, actually had her bladder repositioned from where it had been previously. And so she was having some um, abdominal pain and some urgency and bladder issues. And so we were able to calm the system down and then allow for the body to accept that new position of the bladder in the abdomen. Yep, such a um, kind of mysterious thing that is not talked about 
And so many women go through this and it doesn't matter, you know, what, how old you are, or if you're at that, you know, partial hysterectomy or you had a total or you're in your 30s or 40s or you're late into your 60s or 70s. Um, all this can be helped with the right kind of get guidance too. Yeah. I think our two biggest takeaway points would likely be related to um, the awareness of being able to calm the system if you happen to have just irritation, inflammation, post-surgery in that abdominal area, and then also the awareness of knowing how to strengthen that pelvic floor so that you can allow for those muscles to properly support your internal organs, regardless of what surgery you may have had. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, we love to hear from you.